Now that word prosperity, here's where we have to be careful. Careful. Uh, yeah. It is, and, and, and this is something adamant that I'm adamant about. Don't let that word be gross to you. It's not a gross word. In fact, we should honor that word because God picked it to be put in his book. Yeah. And it would be just like Satan to try to talk you out of the power of that word and to make you think it's gross, to make you think it's sketchy or weird or icky or whatever feeling word you want to put to negative. Prosperity is not a negative. I've got the definition. Can I read the definition to you? Please. To advance or gain in anything good or desirable, successful progress in any business or enterprise, attainment of the object desired, like a goal. That's the main definition. To advance or progress in any good or desirable thing. Mm -hmm. Does that sound gross to anybody? Is that? Is and then we look here at Psalms 35, 27. He says this, let them shout for joy and be glad, saying continually, let the Lord be magnified, who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. What's the problem here? If God takes pleasure in us advancing, getting ahead, uh -huh. obtaining things that are good and desirable, and you want to be anti-prosperity, it's like, what? Do, you want to go back to just the losers club again? Like, what are we doing? Right, right, right. Anti-prosperity, that is a thing within the body here. So again, focusing on those that are watching my channel, my audience, my, my clients, my longtime viewers, they're Christians, your believers, whatever doctrine you believe in God, Jesus, the whole thing, salvation, you're saved. And yet you've got this icky feeling around money and prosperity. And we've got to redefine these these words or else our belief system is going to block us from receiving yeah. what it is you ultimately are desiring as a kingdom citizen you've been planted with desires god put desires in us and i think that's another icky word desire that sometimes it's like i don't want no desires you know like uh, i'm you know i have to be this way and kind of walk like on on eggshells as a christian i'm like no if, if i'm going to serve you god i'm not walking on eggshells can i just read the like it's literally on the next page a scripture that talks about that can i just read it to you real quick yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> psalms 37 4 says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart mm. goes on the next verse commit your way to the lord trust in lean on rely on him be confident in him and he will bring it to pass all right let me recap let me recap on the whiteboard here real quick for you guys so operating in god's kingdom for a kingdom mindset you're winning here now and after we serve one master prosperity is available it's not a bad word we must be aware of the accuser. I think I spelled that right, accuser. So beware of the accuser, which then leads us to this next layer that a lot of Christians uh, need a break from, that it's either coming from their religion or tradition or their uh, nationality, their you know background, whether they're Spanish, black, white, Korean, you name it. There's some cultural beliefs that need to be let go, I think, in order to really fully operate as a king, as a queen in God's mm -hmm. kingdom, because this is a new culture. Kingdom culture, kingdom mindset, like that's a new, yeah. you're a whole new creature. So you can argue, you can say if they would, you know, when they ask you, what's your race? What's your nationality? Like if, if kingdom was an option, I'd select it, right? Because that's yeah. a whole yeah. culture in and of itself. So I'd like you to talk to that a little bit because you brought it up earlier. And in, a, in a t an environment like this, where there's not just the election occurring this year in our country, but if I'm not mistaken, there's like so many other countries right now that are going through an election change. So there's a lot of elections going on all over the world. It's really, really unique, interesting kind of a, a timing. So you've got worldly cultures and beliefs that you're 24 seven as a Christian, as a, as a kingdom citizen, you're in it, whether we like it or not, it's showing up on your phones, your television, your social media apps, you name it. There's a, a section of the body of Christ that wants to go hide in the woods, get away from the world, and that's just, mm -hmm. I don't see how that's duplicatable long-term. Really, at some point, all areas of the earth are gonna be filled with, with people, right? If we really you know, think about it. So I don't think that's a good, sustainable, long-term, duplicatable strategy to just 
go live out in the woods and disconnect, disconnect from the whole world and social media and all this stuff. Although there's a time and place for rest, right? And, and to pull back when needed, obviously, yes. As it relates to finances and as it relates to the word of God, there are some stories, whether it's God speaking to a specific group or a specific person doing a specific thing, which then causes a curse to occur in their bloodline. I think that happened with David. If I'm not mistaken, King David was was cursed when he did what he did and it affected the future generations. If I'm not mistaken, could be wrong about that, but could you talk to really that belief yeah. when you, because I know you have coached a lot of people or even in your community, someone believes that they have a curse in their family and because of that curse, they now can't go and do this thing that, that uh, God called them to or maybe they just have a, a desire that they haven't yet consulted with the father about, whether it's, I want to start this business, I want to make money, I want to invest in real estate, I want to do this, da da da, and create freedom, but I got this curse from my parents. Right. Parents, parents. So here's how I look at it. We, we go back to, I, I look at things very black and white. I look at things either from God or from Satan. From the enemy that's how i that's how i look at it it's it's been great decision making parameters for me it's really helped because when you come up to something that can seem a little bit confusing or if correct. i just put it that filter yeah. to me it's it's easy to see what's actually playing out in the new testament the new covenant is what the new testament means the new covenant the operating agreement that he has that we have with god is that he sent his son jesus to die on the cross to break the curse from us. So we are free from what, what, what the Bible calls the curse of the law, which was the old covenant, the old operating agreement. Jews and Gentiles. Same thing. Like we're all teamed all up locked now. in. All right. So, yep. okay, so know, original plan that world. <laughs> just the Jews would have salvation. And then the Gentiles, Gentile just means a non-Jew. Right. Now salvation is available to all of us. And of back us. to the original or beginning of our interview, Salvation means all the great things that deliverance is one of the words that's included in salvation. I am delivered from the curse of the law. I'm delivered from the power of sin and death. I'm delivered. So I believe that would include any type of curse that you might think would be on you and your family. Here's what I really, really think though. It's kind of like anything else we've talked about here today is what we're really doing is dissecting belief systems, belief habits, belief patterns. It's what we actually believe. What you actually believe will always manifest itself in your actions. It's actually actions. Belief is actually actions. So if you believe your family is cursed, you start to speak a curse over your life. You claim it like an identity. You believe it. You claim it like there's nothing you can do about it. And then your actions line up with that. And then your results do too. I think when someone says a generational curse, I think that's what's really happening. It's not God cursing you god does god's not in the cursing business okay he didn't participate in that there was even there's even a story where a, a blind kid comes up to jesus jesus heals him and someone asks him hey is he blind because of what his parents did or what his grandparents did and jesus is like no here come here let me show you and he just heals the kid so it's it's things like this where it's like okay your parents screwed up your grandparents screwed up your great 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 grandparents screwed up whatever but you mentioned the scripture earlier, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says that old things have passed away. All things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ. Your slate is wiped clean. Yeah. God's looking at you and he wants, he's got marching orders for you. He's got instructions for you. He's got stuff for you to carry out, stuff for you to do. I like how you've been saying consult with the father. You go consult with the father and do whatever he tells you to do and it's going to work. It's going to prosper. Your business will prosper. Your finances will prosper. And prosper is not bad because we just read the definition of it. Right. It's to advance or gain or obtain anything desirable. One of the, thing, one of the things that was very, very freeing for me is, is knowing that I have that ability to have a session with God, like a coaching session, a consultation, a, a counseling. Um, well, that was one piece. The second is as it relates to becoming a new creature. And on top, of, I don't know if it's in that same uh, uh, in Corinthians as well, but God forgets your sins completely. Um,